Hello, welcome to our Thursday get-together again. And what are we talking about again? Well, coronavirus, for a change. And um, I don't know when we're going to stop talking about it. Um, I think I'm really going to have to do other talks because I've got loads of talks I want to do on different conditions and different plans and different ways we can change our lives. Um, but at the moment, I mean, t tonight's topic is about risk and, and are you at risk and the sort of risk you're at. So we re need to go through that. I've just got myself a little um, uh, set up on the computer here so I don't need to hold a piece of paper in my hand, which might help because I usually keep dropping them. Um, anyway, so are you at risk is the title. And of course, I mean, are you risk of dying because... Oops. I'm at the risk of dropping my earbud there. I'll have to keep still, won't I? Where's it? There it is. Keep my head still, that's the um, AirPod. Right, okay. Um, are you at risk of dying um, with regards to coronavirus? It's, um, it's a difficult thing. Um, the truth is, uh, you know, how would anybody ever know um, and listening to the corporate media, um, everybody could be forgiven for being absolutely scared out of the wits. People have, I, I mean, people give me a, a 10 foot berth, a three metre berth walking around me along the pavement. Um, and I do forgive them because they're just scared witless if they haven't got um, the understanding of life and they haven't, they can't have an understanding that. Um, the people in charge are just not nice people that are well-meaning and really looking after us. And, you know, let's 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 talk about that. But the the real problem of the corporate media, media and most people, the corporate media is anyone you've ever heard of, because if you've heard of the media, then they are corporate media. And we of course, we include BBC, the CNN, MSNBC, all the major newspapers, The Guardian, especially in the UK. Um, and other corporate uh, media. And the corporate media, except for the BBC, uh, receive funding directly or indirectly from the pharma medical cartel and their deep state allies. All this sounds a bit conspiratorial. <laughs> I wish it wasn't because my life would be so much easier. I just want to get on with helping people, doing what we've been doing for 30 years or more and helping people get uh, get everything back. I mean, we, we've just got to, two of our staff calling all the people that have been on the Maxi Focus and the Eyesight plan since Christmas so that we can monitor the success and, uh, you know, adjust things, help them, whatever. So this is what we want to be doing. And I want to be talking about such things. But the really, the corporate media um, and governments have been taken over by the pharma medical cartel and their deep state allies. Um, I'm not going to talk about the deep state itself, actually, um, in case they're here, but, you know, they're a, a rotten bunch. And I use the BBC only as an example of the national and international media, but it also includes social media such as Facebook and Google. I know I'm on Facebook now and for whatever reason, when it's a page or a group, you could say or do a lot more if I, than if you just put it on the normal Facebook and tried to promote it. I'm banned from there. They just will not allow me to promote on the normal Facebook, but I can get to talk to you on this anyway. That's good. Um, over the, you know, most media have always had some sort of nationalistic, they always look after the interests of their country compared to anybody else. You know what I mean? In America, it's, you know, the baddies of Russia and China and in the UK, it's Europe, <laughs> OK, the EU. Um, but um, it's no longer the case, actually. The BBC specifically um, no longer hides the fact that it doesn't reflect the wishes of the population, the majority of population in the UK. And that's that's crazy. You know, we pay it, we're forced to pay it. It's a criminal offence not to pay the BBC some money to um, to broadcast stuff. A criminal offence. You can go to jail if you don't pay the BBC to spout propaganda at me against my interests. You think I'm joking? I wish I wasn't. 
So it really became apparent when um, it unashamedly tried to influence, this is the BBC, the Brexit vote. And the Brexit vote, as you all know, took place a couple of years ago. And us, the Brexiteers, who wanted our independence back from the EU, uh, won. And they tried every trick in the book. But in the end, they lost. You wouldn't think so because they're still trying to actually get us to change our mind and go back in. That's the BBC. Um, but it failed. Uh, they even tried to influence the election after that, where this guy Boris Johnson uh, won, the pri who's Prime Minister now. Um, the jury's still out on how good he is, but at least he is promised to get us out of the EU. We're not really out yet. We've still um, got till the end of the year, unless they pull, unless we pull out now. But that's a... Uh, but the bias is there with the BBC all the time for the EU and now their bias is for the leader of the opposition so they can try to pull, because what they want to do of course is have the uh, Prime Minister as a puppet to their uh, bias and so they're of course supporting the leader of the opposition. A Sir Keir Starmer, it sounds a good socialist leader doesn't it? Sir Keir Starmer um, from a wealthy family. Crazy. So I'm not talking politics now, even though I've got to bring politics into it, because the BBC, as with most corporate media, reflects the advice and interests of the medical pharma cartel and, of course, the deep state allies, because the deep state is allied to the pharmaceutical. They make a lot of money out of it. Um, because the, the, the pharmaceutical industry is the most profitable industry on the planet, bar none. They make billions, untaxed billions as well, untaxed billions. Occasionally they get fined, and I'll come to that in a minute. So for clarity, the medical, the pharma medical cartel includes the drug companies, researchers, charities, yes, charities, the cancer charities, they're not some nice touchy-feely. I mean, the people that do it are, but they're just suckers. They think they're doing something good. And all that money from the cancer charities goes straight into the pockets and the, the, the bottom line of the pharmaceutical industry. <clears throat> the medical authorities in all countries, um, the World Health Organization, that's part of the pharma medical deep state, um, the politicians, and the political parties, they receive money from the farmer. They're, they're bribed to make sure that they uh, toe the line with the farmer medical requirements. Why do you think? <laughs> Why do you think everybody? I mean, I know Trump is not bending over backwards, but everybody else is actually. All the people around him, all the senators, congressmen, um, our um, uh, MPs the Prime Minister's party, the, uh, he, he won't receive it himself now, he's the Prime Minister, but it, his party will be receiving it and of course um, it helps to um, uh, control the politicians because it's a big amount of money. They control magazines and newspapers because they, they um, either the deep state controls them, as in the case of The Guardian, um, uh, and in the USA, it's the New York Post. I know it's owned by um, the, the boss of uh, Amazon, but they're all in league. Google's in league. Google gets, Google gets um, big contracts from the deep state in the USA to provide services. So are they going to toe the line with the deep state? You bet your bottom dollar. Now, to be fair, most medical doctors don't get money from Big Pharma. Um, there are a hardcore number of influential doctors that are in the pay of um, Deep Pharma. They, they write articles, they, uh, if you like, um, review studies, all sorts of things. But however they do it, money from the pharma is ending up in the pockets of those doctors and they are influential, influential doctors, especially with governments. You know you've got Fauci in the USA, and we have, well, I don't know who it is now, I have to, be, have to say, because um, cause our guy, Neil, uh, got, um, got sacked because he was um, being a naughty boy with a, a married lady um, when he was supposed to be locked down. 
suffering from coronavirus. <laughs> so, so the Fauci equivalents in the UK was supposed to be locked down with uh, coronavirus and he was being a naughty boy with the married lady in his house. So this is how crazy these people are. They think they're untouchable. Um, hopefully they're not. Um, so the influential medical doctors are in the pay of, of Ph Deep Pharma and it's hidden in most countries. You know, we don't see it in the UK, but wonderfully in the USA, because it's a fairly free country at the moment, at the moment, um, the law says that every payment to medical doctor is published and you can see this on the internet. You can go on the internet and you, you can also see the billions of dollars billions of dollars all these pharma uh, companies are fined for their fraud for their uh, killing people without disclosing it and, you know just so many reasons why um but who would trust such people but wait a minute the uk has, has got a one of these pharma that's paid some of the most record fines helping to find a vaccination. Uh, <laughs> how do we know what they're saying is true? Their, their criminal-like activities, their fines of billions of dollars show that they're untrustworthy. So why are we trusting our lives and our vaccinations to this uh, company? I don't know, but you can go, I've got the link on the website and uh, sorry on the uh, newsletter and you can go there if, if don't guess it for any reason of course you can email me and um, uh, uh, ask me you know for it and I'll give you the link but you can see the list it's just well it's <laughs> if I sound like it's a conspiracy they look as though they're absolutely crazy but these this is a list of the fines that they've had to pay and so it's not a secret it's a secret because you're uh, politicians don't mention it. So when Fauci is talking about the, the, the companies are working hard to find this vaccination, he doesn't say that these are criminal-like organisations who are fined billions of dollars. I want an independent investigation into how many of the people who have died, really died with coronavirus, had had a vaccination uh, for flu in their last six months and they want to compare that to the population who has not had coronavirus, because I think it's going to be a hundred to one. I truly believe it really will be a hundred to one. Uh, I think the vaccination, the last vaccination, they had something in it, had coronavirus in it. I could be wrong, but I just they're so criminal like these people. They would look, they will stop at nothing to take control over everybody's lives. Am I against medical doctors? No, I'm not. You know, if I broke my leg, you know, I'd, I'd be seeking out a doctor to put my leg back together again. Or if I was in an accident, I would want a doctor to put it together. And, you know, it, it, you know, doctors are my heroes. These are the people um, whose uh, treatments that, that they've pioneered to get people better. These are the ones and the studies that they publish that I actually follow and then I bring it into my books and write my little books for lung disease or heart disease or Alzheimer's or whatever. I base it all on studies. I don't base it on, but I base it on studies that show results. And there are doctors out there, quietly, most of them, not all of them, but quietly working and they get almost 100% success rate. It's um, in fact these two hero doctors um, were on um, uh, uh, from New York. They were on interviewed on YouTube recently, and they were saying they've got an almost hundred percent success rate recovering patients nearly at death from coronavirus. And you know they they outlined the treatments they've been given, and that's wonderful, isn't it? Guess what? The FTC sent them a, a cease and desist letter. And what the FTC said is they had to send this letter out to their patients and their letter was, Dear patients, I want to let you know that we have been ordered by the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, to stop making any statements about our treatments and protocols 
of vitamin A, C, D, as well as nutritional intravenous, iodine, ozone and nebulization to support the immune disease with respect to coronavirus diseases. We are no longer allowed to tell you our wonderful results. But that's crazy because medical doctors are on TV all the time saying, oh, it's not working, people are dying. You know, so you can report that people are dying and, and, uh, and our treatments are failing. Oh, are they failing because you're waiting for a vaccination by any chance? <laughs> you bet. So that's a craziness. Medical doctors are saving lives, that are saving lives, are being ordered to keep quiet. Those are the doctors. Those are my heroes. Those are who I look at, look out, and look at the the information they publish. And it's an example that the pharma medical cartel has a devious plan, and it's not to cure uh, the um, coronavirus. These people dying, waiting for um, uh, treatments, and let me just. Right, okay. <clears> There's <throat> people dying waiting for treatments. However, the corporate media has not announced one example of doctors saving lives, coronavirus lives, using the um, hydro hydrochloroquine um, plus uh, D. Just not mentioned it at all. And... Um, Yeah, so you've probably heard of hydroxo, hydroxychloroquine in combination with, with um, zinc. And doctors, well, thousands of doctors around the world have been stating that coronavirus can be safely treated with this. That means people get better. And, and this is people who are near death, not, not just sneezing. <laughs> and so they can be. Do I recommend a drug? Well, yes, if it's the best you can get, it's because it's better than another vaccination. You know, it, it really is um, crazy when you can, if you are a risk type person, because, you know, people with lung disease, heart disease, all sorts of problems like that, they are at risk. It's a fact of life, because if you're already, um, your what a power of your good health is really weak, you're not going to fight, uh, fight off the flu, which... This is just another flu, as you already know. So if you're already seriously sick, have flu, vaccination, and that's because I think vaccinations are part of the problem, or you're just an at-risk condition, um, then the hydro hydroxy... <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll, I'll stop trying to say it because I moved on to the next sheet now. I had to I have to read it. But anyway, some new discovery and this um, uh, is from my favorite causes of death people uh, the pathologists um, in Italy have been busy after the event looking at people that have died from literally from um, COVID-19 because so, you know some people do die from it they even though they've been tipped over the edge from their previous condition and what they found is that um, it's pulmonary thrombosis that's actually killing them. That the blood is clotting, uh, they're getting sticky blood because of the inflammation from the COVID-19. It's clotting and they're being starved of oxygen in their lungs from the coagulation of the blood. Nobody else is saying that because they're all still trying to, uh, if you like, rush for a vaccination. And that's that's the if you like, the wrong thing. Certainly the treatment, that explains why so many people were dying on the ventilators. And they were dying on the ventilators. And last week I was saying that I'm sure the reason why the death rate has gone down is because they stopped quickly putting people on ventilators. Well, that's the reason why, because the pathologists... No, pathologists don't tell lies. Their whole raison d'etre is to actually um, uh, find the cause of death. <laughs> All their training, everything. They don't. They don't care about anything else. They don't care about drug companies because they don't make any money from drug companies. They just want to know exactly why people died and present that evidence. And the evidence is <clears throat> that eighty percent of all the deaths was from 
pulmonary thrombosis in Italy. I know Italy doesn't mean it's all over the world, but I think it is. So I still recommend the four steps that I repeat every week. Um, but in light of the that new uh, study from the pathologist, I do recommend for people at risk adding blockbuster all clear. You, if you don't want blockbuster all clears, you have to go to my website, Good Health Naturally or Good Health USA or Good Health wherever um, and, and look. But blockbuster all clear is a super enzyme formula for keeping your blood from st getting sticky and cle clearing up any clots, even as they form around the body. So if you if you're taking it two, three times a day, you're going to keep your blood, um, stop the inflammation and keep the blood clear and flowing. And lots of people use it for cardiovascular disease as well. But you get healthy by following the four critical lifestyle actions that I've said, which is consuming all the vitamins, minerals and other nutrients that should come from really healthy foods, which are no longer in the really healthy foods. Number two is some critical nutrients are created by our body, such as D3, which is the best way. If you can get out into the sun one or two hours a day in a swimming costume, then you can get enough because it's 20 to 40,000 that you'll get from that sun, depending on how long you're there. Um, you can get it from some foods such as mushrooms, but not very much. So you have to take D3 in times of worry, if you know what I mean. In the winter, you've got to take it anyway. Uh, and in the summer, you'll take it if you're not going to be um, sunbathing, like I've just said, a couple of hours a day. Late morning is the best time. In the afternoon, it's a t different type of wavelength. And so you, you want the, the best wavelength, which is sort of 11 to, to 1 o'clock, something like that. You need to consume more of the resident friendly bacteria. That's probiotics to you and me. Uh, and that would normally come from unwashed plants eaten raw, which we don't. So you have to take it as some form of supplement. Now, usually the people who are ill, they take it every day. But then once um, your, your body's back to good health, then just once a week. So it's not an expensive um, uh, supplement just to take one capsule a week to maintain that your um, friendly bacteria. Um Last but not least, number four is breathing correctly. And people don't do it. They don't do it. They truly don't do it. And the, it's important that you get oxygen in and, uh, and clear a certain amount of carbon dioxide. Not all the carbon dioxide, because we need some carbon dioxide, but any excess carbon dioxide in the body will start to kill red blood cells. And if we do that, then we have a, an oxygen deficit problem because the red blood cells carry the oxygen and the iron around the body for energy. So um, you have to get rid of the correct amount of um, uh, carbon dioxide. Um, and it can only happen, and I'll repeat this, it can only happen when we're walking, standing or laying down. It does not function properly when we're sitting down as I am now. I, you know, I prefer to stand and uh, once I improve my studio setting <laughs> instead of our dining table, you know, I, I will be standing because I prefer standing. I, I have not sat down working for since t t 20, 2000. So that's 20 years, 20 full years I've not sat down. I have a standing desk at my home here. I have a standing desk in the office. I don't sit down to work. I feel stronger for it and you know, I just, well, I am stronger. In fact, even <laughs> the 20 odd year olds in our office, when they try to stand up, you know, they, oh, you know, they get halfway through the day. I can't stand it any longer. And I don't even have a chair to sit down to. So um, it, breathing properly only happens when we're walking, standing or laying down. And you've got all those choices to do it. So um I'm not going to go through the immune products that we use because um, it, it's all there. I've been through them before and I'm, if you, I'm sure you do know them anyway. And they're all back in stock now because the initial rush has, has subsided because it was crazy to begin with. We just couldn't get them. So we, we had to order huge quantities, which has been a real financial problem. But we had to do it because 
it was heartbreaking. People were coming on the phone saying, but I've got to have some dip or some vitamin C and sorry, we're out, you know what I mean? Or, or we were rationing it, whereas the, the good health actually would normally sell, say, a three plus one or, you know, some, some offer. They were rationing them to one. <laughs> people wanted four bottles for the family, you know, so... Anyway, that's that's all over now. So, um, and that's it. If you uh, have questions, as ever, you can um, leave them below or email me directly, uh, Robert at GoodHealth.nu, Robert at GoodHealth.nu. November uniform. Uh, I know it's a short one, but it works. Um, but any of the emails, anywhere, you know, Natural Healthy News or Good Health Actually, it all get through to me anyway. So you. you you know, if I don't answer you, it's because it's going to drift in this day and age. I just found that um, uh, G I had some a Gmail account as well. And uh, I just found that uh, Gmail was blocking anything that said good health naturally in it. <laughs> yeah. Crazy will. All right. Take care. And I'll, I'll be here next week. But as I say, I do want to start to throw in a few more. Uh, evenings when we get oh it's evening here actually I know it's morning in USA and uh, yeah and morning actually in Australia soon anyway because my family will be getting up coming on the on the uh, video chat all right take care I finished bye <laughs>